Uh, hi everyone. So in this video, I will uh, demonstrate OpenStack Juno installation using DevStack. I will also walk through uh, different OpenStack uh, Juno services, you know, how we can install them and how we can use them. Um, six to seven months back, I uh, did a blog on OpenStack ISOs installation using DevStack. Uh, along with that, I had, you know, a couple of uh, videos on the uh, ISOs installation as well. Uh, I received quite a good uh, feedbacks on that. I tried to incorporate them uh, in this uh, video series. Uh, I've also written an associated blog with this uh, topic. So basically, the along with the video, most of the things that I will cover are covered in the blog as well. Okay, the first step is my environment. So my environment is like a Windows 7 machine. I have a virtual box installed with this particular version. And this is a pretty important point. Uh, it's good to have as much RAM as possible. So I have around 24 GB of RAM. Um, I have mostly seen that a single dev stack instance, it's good to run it with at least four to eight uh, GB of RAM. Uh, along with that, at least uh, a single dev stack run, it's better to have at least around 12 GB of hard disk space. Okay, first uh, download the Ubuntu uh, desktop version, the 64 bit. So that is what I have used. Next step is we have to create a new virtual machine where we will run the Ubuntu operating system where we can run the dev stack. To do that, go to new. So let's call this as uh, dev stack and let's call it as Linux here. The type. So here, uh, let's select this as at least, you know, 4 GB of RAM. And for the hard disk, let's create uh, a VDI with dynamically allocated space. So here, let's change this to 12 GB of RAM. Sorry, 12 GB of hard disk space. So let's create. Okay, the next step is we start the uh, the dev stack virtual machine we just created. So first thing is uh, I already have this uh, ISO file that we just downloaded. So we uh, select that particular ISO file here and do a start. So this will start the uh, the Ubuntu installation itself. Uh, so this is going to take some time. I'm going to pause the recording here. So here I uh, select the install Ubuntu option. And try to continue. For the username and password, I normally give everything as dev stack. Uh, including the password and step stack and look for login automatically option. Okay, now we have our uh, Ubuntu uh, 1404 up. Uh, so the first step I do here is I basically do an update so that I get the latest um, uh, update so that the next time any to download any software that is going to be useful. So first I do a solo app kit update. So let's wait for that to finish. To, intel, to install the guest additions, it is uh, necessary to uh, install the uh, kernel notable modules. So let me install that. So all these steps are anyway in my blog. So I'm just walking through the steps here. So the next step would be to install the guest additions. So after installing the kernel loadable modules, next we can install the guest additions. So choose the same password, which is the dev stack which you entered when you installed. Okay, so 
So now that the guest additions is installed, having the guest additions basically allows us to, we don't have to work with this very small screen here uh, that we can see here, as well as we can, you know, cut and paste. And basically guest additions provide a bunch of features. So at this point, uh, we can basically restart. Okay, so now after that, uh, my Ubuntu VM is up and I'm able to choose uh, the seamless mode here, which allows me to have a bigger screen size. I have, have customized it a little bit uh, to have a bigger font size and uh, stuff like that. So one thing that is still missing that I need to set up is uh, the networking settings before I can install the dev stack. Uh, to do that, I can do it uh, while the VM is running, but I kind of prefer to do it while it is shut down. So first let's uh, power off the machine here. And then let's go to the dev stack settings here. And inside the network, uh, normally for the first adapter we use for external connectivity, I used a bridged adapter so that uh, this VM directly uh, gets the IP address. Uh, so in my case from the wireless router that I have. And the second one which we want to use it for uh, internal connectivity, let's say if we have multiple hosts that are part of the dev stack cluster and uh, or the open stack cluster and they want to talk to each other. So better to use a host only adapter here. I use one of the uh, host only adapter here and that's about it. And another thing is, okay, uh, let's say I'll also want to increase the memory size to 8 GB here. That allows me to uh, you know, run multiple uh, instances within the VM that I have. So we, um, on storage, I think that is, yeah, that's fine. We click OK here and then we start the VM now. Okay, so now that the system is up, so we can see two interfaces if we do the IF config. So the first is the, the bridge interface, that is ETH0, and then we have the host only interface, which is the ETH1 which uses the 192.168.56 network. So now that we are all set up with our basic environment, we are uh, ready to uh, do the stacking. Uh, before that, a couple of things. One, uh, we have to install uh, Git so that we can you know, download the source code. So let's do that. So next step would be that we need to uh, install or we need to download uh, the stable uh, dev stack um, with the Juno label. So let's do that. So here, if you can see the label stable Juno, and then we are downloading it from GitHub. Okay, now that the download is complete, so let's go to the dev stack directory. Uh, so one thing that uh, we need to do is uh, to set up the dev stack environment with the open stack services that we want to have, where we can customize it. Uh, there is a local.conf file that where we specify the, all the environment variables. So I have already created my custom uh, file. So I'm going to download that file here. Uh, so it is this, uh, this my custom file I have put under the GitHub, and it's also in the blog, so you can you know get that later. Um, so first I will move that to local.com. Um, so that is and let's, uh, that is the naming convention. So we look at this local.com file. Okay, so there are different sections within the local.com file. Uh, the first uh, section is like it's more like environment variables which contains the logging uh, directories and stuff like that. So this is the host IP. So this is something we need to edit. So this is the host IP of the host only interface that we have. So as we look earlier, so we have the 102 IP address. I'll just edit that to 102 here. So that is the only thing we need to edit. Pretty much uh, everything else we can use what is provided by default. Uh, so here, this section says what are the services, uh, that is basic services that are 
you know present so it says no one network is uh, disabled and we have enabled uh, you know the quantum services so this is basically the networking related part and i've used the ml2 plugin uh, for with open me switch as the agent and uh, so this part specify if there are multiple hosts in the cluster how we are going to connect the different hosts in the cluster so we're going to use the vx lan tunnel uh, to connect between the hosts there are the other options like gre and vlan configuration as of now i have commented this part uh, the next part here talks about the credentials uh, which is basically for uh, different services uh, again, we don't have to change any of these, but most of them. Just observe that most, for every, almost every every one of these, I've used OpenStack. Uh, so, silo meter uh, is more used for you know measurement of uh, uh, you know how much is the service being used and stuff like that. We'll cover that in later more detail. Uh, Swift configuration talks about it's more like a like an AWS S3 kind of a service for object storage. Uh, true is the uh, heat-based uh, service that uh, orchestration service with OpenStack. We'll cover that later. Uh, so this section is basically the the scheduler section, uh, which uh, talks about if there are multiple hosts in a cluster, how we have to schedule VMs across the different hosts. And the last one is for being able to run the VNC for the VMs remotely. Uh, so one mistake I made was the Trove service is more used for the database application. Uh, the one that is used for orchestration is the heat service. Uh, so there are some services that are already enabled by default. So some of them we don't specify it here. For example, heat is enabled by default and uh, that is why we are not specified here. Okay, so now that uh, we have uh, walk through what is specified in the local.conf file. The last step is to stack it. So for that, we run the stacking command. This will take uh, quite a bit of time. The first time we run, uh, it's going to download, uh, you know, all the necessary stuff from the, uh, uh, most of the stuff it is going to download from the internet. So obviously we would need the uh, internet connection for this to be uh, working. Uh, the first time it's going to take you know quite a bit of time. After that, after that, the next time it's going to be faster. Um, okay, so I left this running overnight because the first time it takes close to an hour, and uh, now we see that the stacking is completed, and uh, the horizon is uh, running in the local host IP address. This is the host only IP address. The default users that it creates are the admin and demo and the password is open stack. So most of the times, uh, you know, the stacking works fine. In case there are issues, best place to look for, you know, debugging the issues is look in the op stack logs directory. There are two files here, uh, one which is a summary and the other is, you know, the detailed log. So that is, you know, pretty useful. The other thing is, uh, you know, the running logs for every service the open stack starts is in the, uh, the screen directory here. We can search for you know, the logs directly here. The other option is, you know, we can attach uh, to the screen session. And uh, so here we can see the list of all the services, uh, you know, the log files. Like for example, if you want to go to the Nova log file, we can go there and press enter. And if here, if you want to, you know, browse around this file, uh, we can go to the copy mode. All these commands I have put in my blog, so you can refer there. Uh, so to, to detach from the session, you know, let's detach it. Okay, now let's see if the Horizon interface is working fine. Uh, so let's uh, get a browser, and here we can go to local host. And this should take us to the uh, Horizon interface. So uh, here we can so normally you can log in as admin OpenStack. So those were the username and the password that was uh, created by default. All right, there you go. So this is the uh, the dashboard OpenStack uh, interface. Uh, I'll walk through more about you know the individual services in my next next series of videos.